Aloha Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ehuke Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today in Honolulu. And I'll tell you this right now, we have a fascinating guest on the show. So what do you say we go on over here and meet him? Stephen. Hey, aloha. Hey. Aloha. Hey, aloha. Hey, oh, hey. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you nice for to see having you. me on the show. Stephen Morris, did I say your name Stephen right? Stephen Morris, that's Wonderful. Perfect, yeah. And Stephen, tell us where we are today. We are uh, in the, uh, 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 the the district of Moana Lua. Uh, uh -huh. We're in a, you know, what's known as the Moana Lua Gardens area. Uh -huh. uh, the gardens actually extended across the highway over here into what is known as the Mapunapuna Industrial Area. That was uh, part of the gardens area, but they were at one time growing up here. There were some small tenant farmers here. Uh, common mangoes were uh, were in prolifer proliferation here. Mm -hmm. They were, and and actually the gardens were well known for their common mangoes. Wow. Uh, but I grew up here as a boy from maybe age seven to twelve years old. So I kind of like came of age, I, I guess you would say. In right this here. Area, right? right here. So we are are in the lower part of the Ahupua, Monolua, Mapunapuna, but um, the. The valley parts and are known as Kamana Nui and Kamana Iki, and then you have the Ahupua of Mauna Loa that goes mountain to the sea. So great history, a lot of history in this area, yes? Fantastic history, my wow. lord. Um, these lands when um, Kamehameha um, basically took over Oahu or conquered Oahu uh, in, 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 in historic tra traditional times, um, he reserved these lands in Mapunapuna and Monolua for himself because uh, they were so um, uh, momona. They were abundant with food, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and, so, and the fish pond, Mapunapuna, that area across the highway was a uh, was a very large or a series of fish ponds that when when he came, he would help the people in the community help it rebuild or restore it at some point. So. These lands were favored by him. Wow, yeah. amazing, yeah. amazing. Well, Stephen, the reason we wanted to have you on the show today was to talk about something that you're involved in in a big way, and that's an organization called Blueprint for Change, yes? Yes. Tell us about that. What is Blueprint for Change? What does it do? Blueprint for Change is, uh, at the heart of it, we're a, a nonprofit organization. Been around uh, close to 20 years now. Um, what we're about is, I, I like to tell people, is about child welfare and improving the child welfare system in Hawaii. Um, but we do that through a, a series or a system of, of uh, family centers statewide called neighborhood places. And those neighborhood places provide direct services to families who we consider to be at risk of child abuse and neglect. Mm. So we, we're... Um, we're, we're not a, uh, we're, we consider ourselves a diversion program or the neighborhood places are. Uh, we try and keep um, our families out of the child welfare system. Once, once they get into the child welfare system, used to be known as child protective services. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it kind of is a, a really big gamble that they may eventually lose their children if they don't follow the proper procedures and, and uh, find ways to, you know, um, become um, better parents, basically. Mm. So we, uh, you know, basically have been around 20 years. Um, we have a couple of uh, primary contracts with the Department of Human Services. And uh, we, we were diversion, family strengthening and support to these families who we consider to be at risk of child abuse and neg neglect. Now, some of the risk factors, everybody, pretty common to everybody. They are homelessness or lack of some stable housing, mm -hmm. substance abuse, uh, unemployment or very low incomes, mm -hmm. um, uh, health problems, chronic health problems in the family. Uh, and and uh, a few years ago, we found that uh, parental incarceration mm -hmm. among these families we were serving was were, were increasingly becoming risk factors in those families. So not so much abuse of the children, but neglect and terms of, of discipline, structure in the household, those kinds of things. So we try and address those by giving the, 
giving the parents or caretakers some 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 protective factor skills to work with um, when they're working with their children how to nurture with them how to bond with them what kind of activities that they you know can use to to stay connected to their children and provide that structure and discipline they need well Stephen, it sounds like uh, child maybe not child abuse but child neglect is a big issue a big problem here in hawaii yeah you, you know it we, we're working on it I, at one time 25 years ago hawaii was you know, at the at near the top of the list in terms of the the bad list, I call it, in mm -hmm. terms of child abuse and neglect rates in the country. Yeah. Um, but um, back in 1994, there was a a um, child welfare reform initiative that took place. It started in '94, and and what happened is um, between 1994 and the year 2000. Um, uh, Public-private agencies formed this partnership with the legislature, and we looked at, and, and the reform movement looked at, instead of a knee-jerk reaction, every time a, a report came in of a possible child abuse neglect case from the community, you know, instead of the child welfare workers from the D Department of Human Services going in and yanking the child out of the household immediately, um, we got them to consider implementing more more di diversion prevention intervention type mm -hmm. services up front so well, now we have a continuum of services before so now the department and child welfare system has to do an investigation they have to do an assessment um, before they can even find a place where they can fit these parents and families into mm -hmm. and, and so it's not just child protective anymore it's not just keeping the child safe um, it's finding a way to improve the family and, and uh, the parenting skills of those that are taking care of the children. It sounds to me like what you were saying it, before it was a one-size-fits-all type of thing. Right, exactly. And Blueprint for Change, you guys are actually giving and creating options and choices and even different modalities to deal Con with these situations. Constantly trying to find ways to improve child the child welfare system yeah. as a whole here. Yeah. And, and and the risk factors, um, as you know, risk factors, there, there are a set of them, a, a common core of them that we all know of and I mentioned earlier, but like things like parental car incarceration um, are, are, are increasing and becoming increasingly something to be aware of and, and alert to because, and they are, they are a result of, of more current conditions than there were several years ago yeah but if you yank the parents away from the kids yeah, yeah. that leaves them with their kupuna or their yeah. their aunties or uncles yeah. um, who may not be the greatest caregivers but they feel a responsibility to take care of the children but they may not be great caregivers themselves right mm -hmm. so you leave the children in their hands in some cases like kupuna I mean, they have health issues to deal with. So the their children, own health issues. They, they have yeah. children. You know, these young children are, you know, are tend to just kind of be left alone. Mm -hmm. What's really persistent is is child poverty, mm -hmm. and, and the issues of poverty, which really are the root causes of some of the, the neglect and, and and abuse cases. Mm -hmm. um, really, I mean, homelessness, substance abuse, and self medication, as we call it to kind of get away from your problem, everyday problems, chronic health problems, um, unemployment, low income, those are, those are chronic signs of poverty, chronic symptoms of poverty. And we gotta do a better job of rooting some of that out. And it, 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 it requires more than social services. It requires the whole community to get in on the action. It requires our economic sector and our education sector our business sector to get active in finding ways to address it. If we begin to look at using what I call indigenous knowledge, you know, and using the values that we were born and raised with here in Hawaii, and we go back and focus on values first, uh -huh. those of us in the system that want to make changes systemically to the system to address the poverty issues, we, we need to go back as a hui and revisit the core values of what makes this place in Hawaii so important. You know? The cultural practice associated with ohana is very simply oia ii which means truthfulness. Mm -hmm. 
we all have to be very truthful with each other when we talk when we deal with our families right mm -hmm. so again when we when you look at the broader effort to try and address poverty we all have to be those of us who are in this this arena where we are where we need to work together we all have to be truthful with each other in how we go about you know strengthening our families so you know those are those are some simple truths and values i think that we can start to base some of those that kukau kukau on the discussion mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. um i don't pertain i don't claim to have all the answers for that um i tend to have i tend to find solutions by bringing small groups of people together and let's talk it out let's let's look at how we can address the poverty you know let's look at how we can make changes to the education system you know make make changes to the economic system that will focus on our families what we have to do as a society here in hawaii is begin meeting in our groups and begin talking all of us about solutions to these problems of poverty and how to strengthen our families beyond how to nurture and bond with their children you know we have to look at how we're going to how we're going to address this thing called homelessness and that we've been struggling with right okay when when our land prices are so high and when our you know when you know cost of of construction and doing business is so on, how we go about building more low cost affordable housing i think there's an answer in us sitting down as a hui a lahui and i'm talking more more than just native hawaiian i'm talking a lahui of those of us who live in hawaii who really care about what's happening to the people here because mm -hmm. the people are part of hawaii right mm -hmm. and i think we can find the solutions there has to the other part of it there has to of course has to be a political will and the political will is a hard one because it means changing the way we think about land and um, and the way and the cost of living here and how we do business you know the, mm -hmm. certain things got to change and there has to be kuleana and commitment to do that and if you look at going back to those old values what was happening 25 years ago that spurred some of the child welfare reform thing was our foster care rates when you go in and you yank a child out of the household you got to put them somewhere right mm -hmm. so what was happening 25 years besides our child abuse and neglect rates being really high our our foster care um our, our, the number of children in foster care and then of course the the cost of keeping those children in foster care were astronomical mm. you know were wow. astronomical what happens to them emotionally intellectually oh, you know uh, um, despair. Um, I mean, if you're looking at the real, uh, the, the real everyday kind of problems, the children will begin dropping out of school. There'll be, they'll, you'll see symptoms of it in in the fact that they'll truancy. You'll start with truancy and absenteeism, um, dropping out of school, and then of course, no more job you know no more house you know and to alleviate the problems right that they're suffering every day guess what they do they self-medicate right mm -hmm. they start moving into substance abuse and alcohol and, alcohol drugs. and drugs right yeah. and and you know it's just that that spiral that spiral that goes and they lose hope and and at the very bottom they just lose all hope and and then find themselves like their fathers and grandfathers being incarcerated at mm. some point, wow. which is another cost to the state, right? Yes, it just spirals it, it, on and on and on. You know what on. it costs now to yeah. house one of our Hawaii inmates at our prison in Arizona called Saguaro? It's probably fifty to 60000 per mm -hmm. inmate now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably higher here for those in, incarcerated at Halala Valley. So the cost to the state, if you, we don't address it, you know, I, I, you know, we don't address it. It's just going to keep skyrocketing. I always consider myself a social worker at heart, but I, I'm, I'm the, I'm the chief administrator um, for for the entire um, program, I guess, neighborhood place services program. Um, I, uh, you know, we, our office, Blueprint for Change, um, basically does all of the uh, as fiscal administrative 
work to keep this program going. We, we develop subcontracts with, or we call them sub-recipient agreements with all of our, each of our neighborhood places. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have six of them statewide now. Um, so we have subcontracts with each of them. Um, we monitor those contracts, but we do more than that. Like I said earlier, what we do is we, we look for gaps in services. We look for, we've been looking con con constantly for areas in the state where there's a lack of diversion and prevention type, what we call CAN, child abuse and neglect services. And we've identified those services and what we do is we report them to the Department of Human Services in our quarterly reports and, and uh, reporting system to them. Wow. So, um, I, we do other things. I mean, we, we have a, we're stewards of a parent education program, a Hawaiian value-based program called Kamalama, mm -hmm. um, where we, we it's, a, it's again Hawaiian value-based. We use Hawaiian values similar to the one that I talked about earlier um, to try and get parents reconnected to their culture. Unfortunately, most of our parents that we serve are Native Hawaiian. So what we do is we end up, you know, trying to reconnect them to those really good, solid core Hawaiian values, mm -hmm. which are also universal values. And we use those, we, we try and impart and instill those values in them to help them become better parents. What are some of the changes or successes that you've seen in working with Blueprint for Change? Well, we see them, I mean, my, my whole philosophy, and I think those of our neighborhood places, is, is helping transform our families one at a time, right? Yep. So, I mean, we see, we see the, the success stories every day. And I mean, I, what I do is I have my neighborhood place directors actually document these testimonies in their quarterly activity reports. So, you know, um, I mean, working with with a, a single single parent mother who is maybe 18, 19 years old, who has two small keiki, who's experienced domestic violence, has self-medicated to get away from her problems, no job, living in low-income housing, you know, close to that point where I talked about earlier of losing all hope, right? Yeah. And taking through our through our support services, through our through our really caring workers, we call them family success coaches. We don't call them case managers in in our neighborhood places, uh, or case coordinators. And what we do is we we take them under our wing, we work with them solidly for six months, helping them establish some very small achievable goals. You know, what is it? You know, when we when we we work with them, we try and identify those, those really persistent problems mm -hmm. that, that they need to get themselves, their ship righted, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, but we, we need to make it achievable. We, we need to work with them to help them achieve those goals in that period of time so, they, so that they feel some accomplishment, right? Mm -hmm. And we've had some amazing success stories you know, wow. with, these, with the people we've worked with. You know, wow. right? We've gotten these young women in, back in school, mm -hmm. Uh, they got jobs now. Um, they're able to find childcare. I mean, it does, the stories, the stories are very so warming and heartening. You know, to, to know that your services are making a difference. Right? Wow, that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Stephen, do you see in terms of the problems that you see that you come across in dealing with these people? Do you see the same exact problems again and again and again? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and and we even though our even though our services are on paper are time limited, mm -hmm. we, you know, our families, I mean, it's like addiction, right? You, you have to expect that there's going to be some backslide, right? Yes. So what happens is we'll, our families will leave and then down the road we'll see them, our, our, our neighborhood place staff will see, they'll come back in and they'll be showing signs of risk again. Mm -hmm. And so they're welcome back. And they just become part of our Hona. We, we start all over with them or we start where they're at. Um, but generally, you know, I, I, you know each, each case or each family and each parent is unique in, in terms of their problems. But 
you know, when you when you look at it, pretty much it all stems from their they're having a really hard time and, and they're, you know, just entrenched in, in really hardcore poverty, right? Yeah, yeah. Is Blueprint for Change only in Hawaii or have other organizations taken the principles and the model that has been created here and taken it to different parts of, I guess, of the world? To my knowledge, we're, we're, we're here. I mean, we're Hawaii based only. But I, I would I would venture to say, having traveled to conferences across the country, that there are probably diversion programs like us elsewhere. Mm -hmm. They're just not called Blueprint for Change. They're probably called something else. But um, we're we're the only model here in Hawaii. Wow. Basically. What do you see for the future? Are you hopeful for the future? Uh, you know, I as a social worker, I like to I like to think years ago. I like to think that I was going to be able to work myself out of a job sometime. And unfortunately, that doesn't hasn't happened. Um, and and I, I think what I tell people, okay, I'm really disappointed. I'm 71 years old. When I started social work, I was 21. Mm -hmm. So 50 years half ago. Half a century. Half a century ago when I started. You know, I really thought I was going to be able to work myself out of a job, that there was not going to be any family problems anymore. This hasn't happened for a lot of different reasons, and I and I think it's basically because we have been unable to make those systemic changes that mm -hmm. have needed. We've been a, we haven't been able to root out some of the oppress oppressive kind of practices, some of the discrimination that goes that comes associated with poverty, mm -hmm. and so at 71, I look back at disappointment, but in with all the people that I work with and the coalitions, I said we can't stop. I said, just because we haven't worked ourselves in the, our way out of a job doesn't mean we should stop trying. And it doesn't mean that you haven't helped a whole lot of people, because yeah. you have. Yeah. yeah, and again, one by one, right? Yeah. You just, the yeah. false philosophy is you just, you just work with them one by one and you try to help them one. And when you look back collectively over the course of your life and mm -hmm. what you've done, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied with the work you've done? Um, I wish I, I had done more, I think, when... I wish I was a smarter, I guess, when I was younger. Um, I, I, I kind of look at myself as a late bloomer, even though I got started in social work and I found a passion in it early on. Um, I, I stumbled around a lot only because I think I kept, I kept denying that I was a <laughs> <laughs> I kept I kept denying that this was my purpose in life. Ah. I, I was try, starting to explore, you know, I wanted to yeah. explore other things. Yeah. So rather than just follow the purpose that was like right there in front of your face, <laughs> I kept wanting to try something else, right? <laughs> and what happens is when you try something else and, you know, my, my Hawaiian kumu, my teachers years ago said, you know, you know, kia kua. Kiakua lays a purpose yeah. in life for every yeah. one of us. Yeah. And they make it very clear what that <laughs> is, right? Right. Unfortunately, yeah. we're also human beings, so we have free will. Right, right. right. So you can choose that path or you can not yeah. choose that path, yeah. right? Yeah. But they said, bear in mind, if you don't choose that path, <laughs> all kinds of pilikia is going to come to right. you. Right? All kinds of trouble, right? And so what happened is I strayed from the path a couple of times and got whacked alongside <laughs> the head. Right? And finally I realized that at, at a ripe, I wouldn't say a really old age, but I realized that at somewhere around 40 years of age, maybe, maybe 38, 39, 40, that this is what I was supposed to do. You know, Stephen, Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, airs not only throughout Hawaii, but around the world. And I'll bet you that probably somebody right now is watching us, maybe a young girl, 18, 19 years old. She has two young babies and she recognizes herself in what you've described. Mm -hmm. And she says to herself, that's me. And I want to stop it. I want to change. I don't want to fall down that spiral. Mm -hmm. I want to go up. What's your message to her? Never lose hope. It's like my adage about never giving up trying to work yourself out of a social work job. Never lose hope. And that there is somebody there in your community that you can turn to to help make a difference in your life, you know. The services are there. Reach out, you know. 
find them. Never lose hope. Never lose. Once you lose hope, that spiral just accelerates, you know, and you you hit bottom pretty hard. So never lose hope. There are people in the community that are 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 helpers that want to help you want to help you get stronger. Reach out to them. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be hila hila. Um, reach out because they're there to help, and and they're, we got some really good people out there. Too. Wow, what a wonderful message! Please yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Okay, don't Absolutely. stop. Keep no, being a social worker. I am. I am. I, I'm just going to follow that purpose that Kealakua laid out. I don't want to get whacked alongside the head anymore. <laughs> Not enough for that. Wonderful, <laughs> Stephen. Thank you, Mahalo okay, for being yeah. on Voices of Truth and to yeah. our viewers. Mahalo to you for joining Stephen and me here at Moanalua Park. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com, and you can like Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future on Facebook. I'm Ehu Kekahu Cardwell for the Kiwani Foundation, and along with Stephen Morris here, until next time, Ahoy ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.